You're listening to the Waltz World Podcast. Join your hosts, John and Kaylee, as they banter about all things Disney, including Disney parks, resorts, dining, fashion, and movies. They'll keep you up to date with the latest Disney news and rumors, and they'll share their best tips and insight to make sure you have the best Disney vacation possible. So to all who tune into this happy place, welcome. It's the Waltz World Podcast. Hey friends, it is September 25th, 2018, and this is episode number 22 of the Waltz World Podcast. I am your host, John, and with me, as she is every single week, the one, the only, Kaylee! Hi, everyone. Hi, Kaylee. Hi. How was your weekend and and week? It was really good. It was fun. It was fun. And that's not, I, I don't think that what you experienced last week sounded very fun to me when you were in class. Yeah, no, that wasn't. What happened? Oh, we want to get into it? <laughs> yeah, that's something to interesting to talk well, about. Well, it's not Disney related and it's nothing serious. I'm fine. We're all fine. But um, everything's fine here. Everything's to see. fine. <laughs> no, I was in the library studying before one of my classes on Monday and I got a text from the security at my school saying to get in a locked door or get in a room and lock the door and await for their notice. And then it turns out that there, somebody was shot um, right by my school and they were looking for the shooter. So yeah, it was like al- almost two hours being locked in a room, not kind of not knowing what was going on. So that's, that's scary though. It was really scary. I was super scared at first. Um, but then I kind of just relaxed because I just, I believe whatever's meant to be will be. So, I mean, I was really nervous. Like all of us were rushed. It's just, you don't know like how you're going to feel until you experience something like that. So for everybody in the library to just kind of look at their phones and look around and like wonder if this is real. And then the librarian's just like yelling, like go downstairs, go downstairs, like go, go, go. And so I just like oh grabbed and I'm alone. Like I wasn't with anybody. I just grabbed all my stuff ran downstairs there was like oh into a basement and got an office with a couple other students and locked the door and like i said we were in there for almost two hours well there's no real easy way to transition from that to no our part three character dining but anyways let's try it we're gonna just transition so this is part three of our character dining uh series i guess it's turned into uh part one we talked about magic kingdom and and epcot character dining part two we talked about animal kingdom and hollywood studios and today in part three we're going to talk about all the resorts uh the character dining at the resorts and there's several um so that's why we kind of wanted to give this one its own episode um and yeah so let's just jump into it so let's start on the monorail loop and there's character dining at every resort along the monorail so let's start at the Grand Floridian. How about the it? The Grand and Flow. It's grand. It is grand. It's and grand. miraculous. And was I going to say it, or are you going to say it? <laughs> <laughs> we both get, we both breathed before we said that at the same time. So the Grand Floridian, the character dining is at 1900 Park Fair. So Kaylee, let's talk about 1900 Park Fair. So I think 1900 Park Fair is so unique because of the characters there. Um, so it's Mary Poppins, Alice in Wonderland, Mad Hatter. Um, and that's for the breakfast. And when I went, I had the breakfast, so I got to meet all of them, which is super fun. Um, I mean, you can meet Mary Poppins in Magic Kingdom, and you can meet Alice in Epcot, and sometimes Mad Tigger Hatter. and Winnie the Pooh, too. Tigger and Winnie the Pooh? Oh, yeah, Tigger and Winnie the oh, Pooh, yeah. yeah. Don't forget those guys. For breakfast, yep. And then dinner mm-hmm. is Cinderella, Prince Charming, um... Th- her sisters. Her her, ugly I was just going to say the stepsisters. So, yeah. And her... Stepmom, Lady Tremaine. Lady Tremaine, yeah. Lady Tremaine. Which you, you can't meet her anywhere, anywhere. except for there. Yeah, yeah. It's the only yeah. place. Uh, you can meet Cinderella, of course, somewhere. You can't meet Prince Charming anywhere, um, unless it's the Christmas party. You can meet him with Cinderella. Um, and you can't, uh, the only other place you can meet the stepsisters are sometimes behind the castle um, or just to the, like, the side of the castle on the backside um, throughout the day as well. 
So what, you've eaten here, Kaylee. What did you, which time of, uh, which meal did you go to? I went to the breakfast and it was, we went at the time because 1900 Park Fair is not open for lunch. So we kind of had a late reservation, uh, like right before they close. And so it was mm-hmm. very, I was not happy with the experience I had here Aww. because it was very rushed because of them closing Mm -hmm. the food was good i mean it was the normal you know mickey waffles eggs bacon breakfast potatoes they have like their signature um strawberry soup which is pretty good it's just like soupy yogurt but it was really good because you could put granola and like other toppings in it um and i think they have like a little omelet station too they do yeah that's one thing that separates them from other yeah Which I don't eat eggs, but um, the whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah. How do, you don't? No, they like upset my stomach. Oh, I can. I, how did I not know? Have we? We've never talked about this. No. Oh well, when we went to, when we wow. went to Ohana for breakfast, I didn't eat any of the eggs. I can only eat egg whites, and that's only on like huh. a good day because they just upset my stomach. Okay. All right. So, yeah. need to go into details. No. <laughs> One of the joys of being me is like my stomach gets upset very easily. So <laughs> Yay. just a little joyous note for you. But yeah. So the breakfast was really good. It was just the interaction with the characters was very rushed. Um, so if you do go, I would suggest trying to get like an earlier breakfast reservation before they close. Because I think then you'll have a little bit more time. Because it's a it's a decent sized restaurant. It's not huge, which would give me the impression that you would be able to spend a significant amount of time with them to be able to get a nice interaction. Um, and it's not that I didn't have a nice time or anything. It was just, it was all very like rush, 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 like meet this, say hi, you know, move on, yada, yada, yada. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, the food was good. I would go back. It just not at the time that I was there the first time. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Krista and I have done breakfast and dinner here. We've done breakfast a couple of times, um, mainly because, um, of Winnie the Pooh. So Winnie the Pooh is not going to be walking around meeting. He's going to be the character you meet before you leave at some point. Kind of like how the beast is at be our guest dinner. You meet the beast before you leave. Uh, was it like that when you, when you went to no. you go and have like a professional photo pass? No, really? No, oh, that's the way it was. When we When's went. the last time you ate there for breakfast? Uh, it was, it was probably a couple of months before you did. Oh, maybe they changed it then. Yeah, no, and I, I didn't. Or maybe it was just the time that I went. But no, he came He came to our table, just like Tigger hmm. and everybody else. Interesting. I guess maybe it depends on if they have a photo pass person, maybe. I yeah, maybe. Maybe. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Well, um, like, like you said, the breakfast is good. It's got all the regular stuff, too. But the, it's the strawberry soup that everyone rants and raves about. Krista loves it. Like, it tastes like like you said strawberry yogurt that's like watered down yeah it's like really real good it's good runny strawberry yogurt it's really good yeah 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 but it kind of like played with my mind because i'm like it's supposed to be soup like and the but it's way, like sweet and the way you dispense it too because it's oh, like yeah. self-serve is in like <laughs> not those, appetizing yeah it's like those things that you get like cereal out of if that makes sense. Yeah, like, kind of. The yeah. cereal things that you like pull the lever <laughs> and it comes down. The dry cereal, mind you. And this is like a liquid just like <laughs> yeah, like into your Yeah, bowl. it's weird. But no. It's and weird. then they have all the toppings. Well, they have granola, chocolate chips, berries. Mm-hmm. So you could kind of make it your own. But the actual flavor of just the strawberry soup, you could just eat it plain and still really like it. Yeah, um, the the buffet is not very big. It's kind of a small buffet. It's deceptive because it looks big, but it's just two of everything. So right. It's got like one side, two sides, and it's just two of everything. Um, breakfast was good. I mean, it's breakfast, it's the same. We've talked about that a bunch. Dinner, though, um, dinner, like you said, you meet Cinderella and all those cast of characters. Um, the food is very similar to the food you get at Crystal Palace, actually. Um, they still have the strawberry soup, um, but they have like a curry chicken. They have like salmon, uh, Mongolian beef. They have like catfish. Um, 
They have peel and eat shrimp stuff. They have uh, pork masala, clam chowder, ravioli, um, chicken noodle soup, ribeye. And then, of course, the typical mac and cheese. It sounds really good. It's very diverse. And I think that's kind of what. So, like, here in Tennessee, do they have, like, Ryan's Steakhouses or Ryan's, like, buffets down in Florida? No. Or, like, Golden Corral? Oh, they have Golden Corral. Yeah. Okay. So, those places freak me out. Oh, I don't go there. I only go to buffets at Disney. And even still, I feel like I need to sanitize my whole existence after eating there. Yeah. No. I, I think it's the fact that there's so many different foods all in, like, the same buffet and i'm just kind of it just kind of weirds me out i don't know why i'm weird i guess but it just kind of like that and the germs but you can't have like too many food choices on the buffet (laughs) or you're weirded out well i think it overwhelms me and there's all these different smells that just like don't go together like catfish and then you got the stinky pete next to you yeah which smells like catfish you've got the like (laughs) this place you've got you've got catfish and then you have um, a cheese tortellini and cream sauce. Like those two don't go together. They're just trying to <laughs> appease everybody. They're trying to give you a little bit of something. So if you don't like fish, okay, have the pasta, you know? I mean, I get yeah. what you're saying. Like you kind of want it to be like, oh, we're going to 1900 Park Fair because they serve Italian food or something like that. I get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But I also think it's nice that, they do that to kind of be able to, like I said, appease everybody. Yeah, I get that. I, I get that. I just, I think it's all the smells and it's kind of overwhelming and all that stuff. That's, I think, why I like breakfast buffets better at Disney because it's kind of That's all just, the same It's just why thing. I like family style better because you don't mm. deal with a buffet mm-hmm. at all. So the pricing for 1900 Park Fair is breakfast 15 to 34.99 per adult and then dinner is 35 to 59.99 per adult. Um so obviously like everywhere else breakfast is cheaper. Um and like Kaylee said, I would definitely suggest going earlier rather than later in for breakfast because of the whole feeling rushed thing. Right. Um it seems like the tables are a lot closer together too. I was in the restaurant. I was going to mention that, yeah, because we were like a party of four, but then there was like a two top of a couple pretty close behind us. So we felt like we were kind of on top of them when we were in the mm. aisle. And plus, like I said, we were so rushed, so it was just like very crazy. And I felt bad that we were kind of like cramping on them when they're trying to eat. Yeah. But yeah, I hate restaurants where like when Krista and I. They, you know, people who, when you're a party of two, they just throw you anywhere. Right. Yeah. Um, and like I hate like a cheesecake factory at cheesecake factory. They sit you down at a table and you're literally like almost sharing at the table with another couple. Like you're like on top of each other. And I hate that. No, I hate when I ate, when me and Cheddar Biscuits ate at Enzo's hideaway, the first and only time that we've ate there, but we were at a little two top that's in the aisle and they have two top two, Mm. like one after the other. And so when a tall guy, like this guy was like six foot plus tall sits behind me, his chair is like pressed against (laughs) mine. But I mean, thankfully he like asked to move because like he couldn't fit there. And I'm like, I'm not that big. So it's not like I sit very far away from the table. I sit pretty close. So for him to like be on my chair basically was just wait. And I was just so upset at that situation just for that one moment. But like I said, thankfully he like asked to move and they just like moved the table over a little bit. But yeah. And even me and Cheddar Biscuits were at Texas Roadhouse. Do you have those? Have you been there? We do. And I hate it. Oh, we hate it too. But we were there. Um, with his family that's where they like to go and they dance and this girl is like literally her like booty is like right by my table i'm like eating my salad <laughs> yeah i'm like i literally like have to scoot closer to his mom because i'm like what she's like literally like her butt is in my salad so i just I mean that's what you pay for when you go to the texas road yeah no not at all but it's just <laughs> i get what you're saying i don't like being on top of people i don't like you know, hearing other people's conversations Mm -hmm. or just like, you know, all of that. But I don't want to feel like I can't talk to the person I'm with without the other people listening. Right. Or just like being not heard too, because there's so Mm -hmm. many people. But at the same time, if those restaurants didn't have as many tables as they did, 
there would be longer waits and like it would be harder to get reservations and stuff like that. So I get why, you know, they do have a lot of tables and they're trying to fit a lot of people in at once, but it's uncomfortable. This is kind of general. The other thing is like when Krista and I are together, like we, it's hard for us to get a photo with a character together like the two of us with the character unless the waitress is like right there and I always feel weird like interrupting the people beside me to be like hey can you take a photo of us stop what you're doing stop eating the food that you just sat down with take a photo for us and then you're like they're and they always ask hey was it okay was the photo okay and you're like no but yeah it was great thanks so much like how do you like what's the etiquette of that do you ask the people beside you to take the photo like no. if it sucks do you just say like, oh, yeah, it's great. And just move on. Like, because then the next character comes and they're like, oh, you may take another photo. Like, no, I wouldn't ask. I mean, I I'm the type of person if I see people struggling to get a photo, like if I see a family trying to take a selfie with a castle, I'm like, do you want me to take a picture of you guys? Like, I don't mind taking pictures for people, but I don't think I would personally if somebody's eating and I, you know, would ask them. When the only time that I ate at a character dining where it was just two people, it was me and my sister at the Crystal Palace, and there was a photo pass person. They weren't, like, taking photos, but they were just guiding the characters um, around the restaurant or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we just asked them to take our pictures. So I think that's convenient if there's somebody there to, like, that's, hope, like, yeah. helping the characters go around the restaurant yeah, to be able I'll to totally take a picture. Yeah, I'll totally ask a cast member. But yeah, as far as like asking somebody while they're eating, I don't know. I mean, I might offer, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. It's a very like weird situation. Yeah. I don't know. Someone always offers. That's the thing. Like they're like, oh, do you want us to take a photo for you? And nine times out of 10, we're just trying to take a selfie. Like we just want to take a selfie. Like we take selfies with all the characters. Like we have a whole like collage. Let me of, take a selfie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so like sometimes I just want to take a selfie, but then I feel obligated to be like, okay, yeah, thanks for offering. Even though I didn't want them to take the photo. Like, no, because I, could... I don't want to offend them. I don't want to be like, no, don't take a photo of us. Oh no. You could just politely say, oh no, we're just taking a selfie. Thank you though. What's wrong with I feel with that? obligated. I feel, I'm see, no. I'm, I feel, well, see, I'm too nice. But they probably feel obligated to ask somebody who's taking a selfie if they want their picture taken. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so Maybe. it goes both ways. You're just reading into it too much. I think I am. So right. 1900 Park Fair, worth it? Worth Not it worth for it. me. Both breakfast and dinner? Um. Yes, just because of the characters you meet at dinner. I mean, I haven't personally had the dinner. It doesn't sound... Hor like disgusting or you know <laughs> I would try it I mean I always say try things at least once but definitely mm -hmm. worth it to me I think it's worth it as well both um, yeah breakfast not as much because of the characters but th something I didn't mention is that the characters at dinner the stepsisters are if you haven't met them before at the park they are loud and obnoxious and they make a big deal about everything. Like they are hilarious. They will yell at you across the way. And um, there's always a guy that proposes to one of the sisters and there's this big to do about it. Like they make a big deal about it and they're hilarious. They are hilarious. So I say the dinner is hundred percent worth it for sure for the characters one, but the food wasn't horrible. Let's keep going on the monorail. We're trucking our way over. Please stand clear of the doors. Oh. Por favor. Blah, 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 blah. I can say it, but it sounds really white, <laughs> so I'm not going to say it. Okay. We are going to the Polly for Ohana. The, the Polly. Mm -hmm. Family. Ohana means family. Yes. The Polynesian Resort. Ohana. Breakfast. Dinner. There is not, uh, there's no characters at dinner, so it's just breakfast. Right, 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 right. So the breakfast starts before you go into the actual restaurant and take your seat. You meet Stitch, which is so cute. He's my favorite little or, baby. Or who? Or Pluto. The last time Chris and I went, they had Pluto outside meeting. Oh, I guess it could change. But mm -hmm. when we went, we met Stitch. Yeah. Yeah, I love which Stitch. Which is stupid. I hate that. I hate that it's out there like that. Yeah, I hate that too. But I mean, it is what it is. I just love Put Stitch. Moana out there. <gasps> that would be so good. They should do that. They should do that. 
But either way, I didn't mind meeting Stitch. I mean, it sucks not having them be able to, like, go to table to table. But you still get... That's when you get an actual, like, photo pass photographer there to take your picture, which I think is nice because you're kind of going to Ohana. I mean, I go to Ohana just to see Stitch. So, I mean, if you're going just to see (laughs) Stitch and you get the opportunity to have, like, a nice photo pass... Okay, I say nice, like, very with quotes, be air quotes, because sometimes photo pass pictures turn out garbage. But to ha- just to have the opportunity to get, like, a nice picture, I think is cool. But, yeah, so yeah. you meet Stitch, Pluto, Lilo, and Mickey. Mickey in Hawaiian shirt. Mickey in Hawaiian shirt, and Pluto has a little lay on, too. Yeah. And then, of course, Lilo's in her dress. And Stitch has a little lay-on, too, doesn't he? Or no? Uh, he does. He does. Yeah, Just he a does. little lay-on, which is mm-hmm. cute. Yeah, this is also a place where you can see the where the characters will come around multiple times. Right. And if they, you're there long enough. They do the little um, train with the kids, and they have the little, mm-hmm. like, mara- Shakers. Shakers. And- whatever. What are those called? The little... It starts uh, with an M. Maracas, maracas, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which yeah. is super cute. Um, and then, yeah, the characters came around multiple times. But for me, I mean, once they come around once, I'm just kind of focusing on eating after that. Unless, like, <laughs> I really don't like the picture that was taken the first time. But I don't know. I guess once is enough for me. I mean, I know you're paying to meet the characters, but whatever. Yeah, the price there, it's enough for me. Right, because the food is so good. This food is so good. The price is um 26 bucks for adults and like 15 for children about and it's family style which i love so Mm -hmm. it's really hard for me to choose between ohana for breakfast and garden girl for breakfast because i really like the both of them and i think it's because they're both family style because the buffets are good but there's just something about family style and just the convenience of not having to like worry about missing a character and having just the food brought to you, but still being able to get unlimited amounts of the food. Um, I just think it's really nice. So yeah, it's really, it's a hard toss up for me between Ohana and Gigi because, well, they both have characters that I love. So I mean, (laughs) yeah. Um, you get the normal stuff, sausage, um, Mickey waffles. They also have Stitch, Stitch waffles, waffles, which I think tastes better. Um, <laughs> Agreed. Eggs, bacon, and sometimes they will give you um, like ham with pineapple like on it. Sometimes we've had it one time where we've gotten that. And what's the um, other specialty know. thing they have? The other specialty thing they have is this warm pineapple bread that is. Unbelievable! It's unreal, unreal. Like, I don't know. I don't know how they make it. If I could figure out a way to make it, and the juice, I would. yeah. Um, the pog, the pog. It's, it's it's the same juice they serve everywhere. They just call it different things. At Tusker House, they call it jungle juice. Right. Uh, at Ohana, they call it pog. At um, Garden Grill, they call it. Uh, ah, I can't remember. I don't know. Maybe they call it Pog at Garden Go. I think they call it Stitch Juice. Stitch, at they do, they do. Stitches Juice. Stitch, Stitch Juice right. at Ohana. But it's just passion fruit, orange, and guava. It's amazing. But it's so good. I love it's, it. I they love have it, it at so much. Um, 1900 Park Fair, too. I don't remember they what do. they call it there. You can actually get it. If they serve it at breakfast, you can get it for dinner. And it's at, amazing. Like, those 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, Tusker House has a adult version of that juice. With what? If you are alcohol in it i think it has rum in it mm. see that would be something that rum. would sneak up on you you could drink like a <laughs> bunch of those and the next thing you know you're just gone yeah but, i like the uh the adult lemonades at uh toy story land uh, toy story yeah those those catch up on you quick um so the other cool thing the bread obviously but one of the coolest things is just that pushes this place over the top is I've never felt rushed there ever. It's very laid back attitude there. I feel like Um, they are, and they're not the type that they're going to be like on top of you all the time. Do you need this? How's this? How's this? How's this? Like, I hate that. Yeah. They're not like that at garden girl either. No, which is nice. I think it's because it's family style. I think that's why. Right. Um, But 
the other thing that puts it over the top is the atmosphere of the place. It's the Polynesian. Yeah. Like it's the, it's my favorite resort in the world. Mm-hmm. And you look out, you look out over the Seven Seas Lagoon. And if you're positioned correctly, you can see the castle. And somehow, usually when it's just Chris and I, they'll always put us like right up on that window. Yeah. We were and so right up just on turn that window. And we were. Mm-hmm. And it, it just, there's no better way to start your day than Ohana, jump on the monorail and go to Magic There's Kingdom. also no better way to start a friendship than at Ohana. <laughs> That's right. It was literally the first time we had met and we all, and it was just like a spur of the moment thing. I was at work the night before and I just texted Chris. And I'm like, hey, we're, we're going to come. Like, can you make it happen? And the reservation got modified and we were there. We made it happen. We made it happen. And it was so... It was so nice. I mean, that's when you know. Like, when you can have a good meal, you meet awesome characters, <laughs> you have a nice view, that's when mm-hmm. you know. Um, so go to our Instagram. We we posted that photo on our Instagram um, yesterday. So go check that out and, and see us for the first time. See meeting. little baby us. No, not really. That was yeah. not even that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so worth it Kaylee is it worth it oh my gosh yes (laughs) if you have not gone go like book your the reservation for your next trip your next time there go it's It's so so good like I said it's very hard toss up for me with Ohana and Garden Mm -hmm. Grill as like my top favorites it could just be because they both have like specialty breads (laughs) but (laughs) (laughs) and the characters of course but yes book it go oh they bring out fruit too I forgot they bring you out like strawberries and grapes and pineapple Mm -hmm. before too with the bread so yummy Guys, this place is 100% worth it. If your kid loves Stitch and Lilo, that they, this is the no, place you got to go. No, if you love Stitch, don't even ask your kids. Your kids, don't, you're, they weren't the OG Lilo and Stitch fans. You were the OG <laughs> Lilo and Stitch fan. So go for yourself. Get you, some, get you some Stitch. Get you some Lilo. And enjoy everything that it has to offer. 100% worth it. It's probably, it's probably my favorite. The dining on, on property. It's my number one. The end. Yeah, I can't. It's a very hard choice, like I said. For me, between the Ohana breakfast and the Garden Grill breakfast, it's like my favorite, some of my favorite meals. But um, All right, so moving on to the contemporary and to one of the uh, character dining experiences that is considered like a must-do by a lot of people. And me included, it's Chef Mickey's. Whenever I was growing up and we would go to Florida, we would never stay on property just for money savings. And we would park at the TTC, we'd get on the monorail, which I was in love with the monorail, and you would drive through the Contemporary Hotel and you look down to your right and you see Mickey Mouse and Goofy and Minnie and Pluto and Donald. The Fab Five. And I always wanted, always wanted to eat down there. Like my entire life, I always wanted to eat there. And I built it up in my head like it was this incredible experience. So in 2016, when we went for the first time, uh, Krista and I went for the first time, just the two of us, we went there because it was my birthday. And I was so disappointed. (laughs) (laughs) Like we went there for breakfast and like I was like, I was like so excited. Like I was almost in tears. How, cause my whole life, I mean, those little vacation v- videos that they would send you from Disney, that they would like show highlights of different things around the park to get you go to Disney. Like I would watch those and I would always watch the part about the contemporary hotel and Chef Mickey's like over and over and over and over and over again. Um, I still have never stayed at contemporary, it's still a dream of mine, but. We went to Chef Mickey's and we sat down and I'm all excited and I can't wait. And here's all the characters coming to meet me. And then I go to the food bar and it was only like 8, 15 in the morning. So it was early still. And the food tasted like it had been out for like 12 hours. (laughs) It was dry. It was, it had an old taste to it. It was just not good food. I've never done the dinner or lunch there, but I can't imagine it being much better. And you're paying tons of money for Mm -hmm. Chef Mickey's. 
This is like one of the most expensive. It is the most expensive. Well, aside from dining, like character dining. No, aside from like Cinderella's royal table. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's definitely more expensive. But this is like right below it. Right. No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the reason is because this is the only place where you can meet all five of the Fab Five, the five original characters at one place. Yeah. That's why. Um, Lucky, and I think they build it up to be a big deal, but. They definitely do build it up to be a big deal. Um, and I've heard that Goofy's kitchen in Disneyland, which is kind of the equivalent of Chef Mickey's here, is much better, which hurts my soul because just Disneyland has everything better than us almost. But yeah. lucky for me, when I ate here, it was at a family trip that I took when I was like probably not even eight years old. So I don't really remember how the food tasted. However, when I went, Chip and Dale were there also. Hmm. So, um, because I have pictures from that That trip. a while ago. And if you look at our posts from yesterday, I will post some embarrassing but super cute baby pictures of me at Chef Mickey's from back in the day. So you can see that. But, so I don't remember how the food (laughs) tasted because I was just in awe because... Chip and Dale were there and whoever else, Mickey and whoever else. I'm almost positive that that this is what I'm thinking of because I think this is the only character dining we did. So it has to be that they were there. But Mm -hmm. and they had a little like chef hat on, which was so Mm -hmm. cute. I could just eat them up. But so I don't I was lucky enough to not remember what the food tasted like. I was just going to say they do hype it up and to spend that much money just to basically meet the Fab How Five. How much is it? It is almost $50 for adults. So they, they give you the price range or whatever. Or 33 for breakfast, sorry. And then 50 for adults for dinner and lunch. So they give you that kind of price range. And then 18 to 27 for kids. Again, like I said, we're talking about Cinderella's Royal Table. Like I'm going to have to donate all of my bodily fluids to be able to afford to take my kids to that breakfast. So that's just a little ridiculous to me and for the food to not be good as all because it's so hyped up and they're like, they yeah. literally say like buffet, including Sunday bar. Like, I don't care about your Sunday bar. It's not going to make up for the fact that your <laughs> waffles taste like you made them six days ago. Like, yeah. come on. We're naive, but we're not that naive. <laughs> like, I know they're doing some renovations on the area that the where the restaurant is, uh, but I know when I was there, it was very 90s, which I did appreciate that like early 90s, late 80s kind of neon-y kind of vibe to it. Also, I think we were seated like right beside the buffet slash right beside the kitchen door. So like the environment wasn't the best for us, um, but... I I was just stoked like to be there. Like I'm serious. Like when I say like I was in tears from like like a dream of mine coming true. Um but uh, so depressing. I would I would rather eat at a couple of places to meet all the characters than to eat one meal and meet all five of the characters. And you're not meeting them together. They're coming up to you separately. Um but try it. I mean, it may it may have just been the one time I was there. We're never going to try it again just because it's not worth it to us. <laughs> try it, but it. we're never going there again. No, um, I don't think it's worth it at all. And I had something to say, and it completely slipped my mind. Oh, good. Ugh. What was I going to say? Um, so not worth it to me. It's not worth it. Oh, I was going to say, I mean, you said that you were there in 2016. I was there probably, I don't even want to say how many years ago, because I'm just so old. But Like 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. 30 years. No, 30 years ago. No, but... Um, so, but even still, present day, I see, you know, people who go there and they're just disappointed, disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. I have not seen anybody be like, Chef Mickey's is the place to go. Like, no, mm. it's, it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not so. There's other places to eat breakfast at the Contemporary that is that are much better yeah. um, than, than yeah. there. They don't have characters, but yeah, same If thing. you're going to spend the money, though, like, go so... I don't know, because we always say how you're spending the money on the characters, but just for the <laughs> dining to be so bad and to spend so much money on it is like, like 
you said, John, just go to like a bunch of different places where you can meet the characters. And I promise you, you'll have a much experience better different meal things and much better yeah, experience. And experience different food. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is not on the monorail loop, but it's a considered a Magic Kingdom area resort. And that is uh, Mickey's Backyard Barbecue at Fort Wilderness, um, the campground area there. Mickey's Backyard Barbecue. I've never done it. However, I have some close friends that just literally just did it. Um, and they loved it. Loved it. Um, our friend, uh, our friend Glenn just did it. Glenn. He just did it. I'm pretty confident. That's what he said the other day. Um, but Mickey's Backyard Barbecue is at the Fort Wilderness. Um, you get to meet Mickey and Minnie and Goofy um, and Chip and Dale as well. Um, they're kind of like in their Western wear. Um, it is, so the food is like, what? I said so, so cute. cute. Oh, um, it's all you can eat barbecue spread. Ugh. Um, you'll have like live entertainment, um, like Western band and people who are like doing like rope tricks, like cowboy rope and tricks and that kind of thing. And line dancing. Is it outdoors? Um, it is, and it's got a covered area, too. Okay, because I, when I was looking into this, because I had not ate there before, they mm -hmm. don't do it in January or February, and it's only on right. Thursdays and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... It is. Which makes it pretty hard to get a reservation for, but as you said, I've heard so many people that had such a great time there. I mean, yes, you're outside. I hate barbecue food, but I really <laughs> want to go just to experience it, because I'm sure you're pleasantly surprised sometimes, Like, and I know I am, too, with food so. yeah they have so it's barbecue ribs smoked chicken hamburgers hot dogs all the trimmings for that corn on the cob mac and cheese and more sides and things oh, like okay that. so you could get like a hamburger if you yeah. didn't want to yeah eat, or like, hot dog a rib. um they also have like lemonade fruit punch soft drinks plus a part of your price you get complimentary wine and beer unlimited yeah that's the same thing at the hoop de doo review yeah that blew yeah. my mind when i saw that but i mean you're mm -hmm. you're 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 paying for it because yeah. this is one even of, if you're not drinking it you're paying for right it. because this is one of the more pricey and it probably is pricey too because of it only happening two days out of the week and 10 months out of the year it's not like yeah. every single day where you hit 65 mm -hmm. so you're kind of paying for that as well and you're paying for the show, show you're paying for the yeah. characters the food you're paying for all of that um it's over 60 bucks per person mm -hmm. and then Literally, I'm about to have a heart attack saying this. $33 for your children, people. Mm -hmm. you take out a loan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have uh, different like categories of like availability. So like there's a category one, which means you're like you're first you're you're able to get into the backyard barbecue experience earlier. Um, and you're like sitting like on the main floor mm -hmm. closest to the stage and that stuff. But then they have like a category two, which is like $10 cheaper. Yeah. They do the same thing at the hoop to do review. Cause depending on where you sit, that's kind of what you pay for too, is your spot and how close you are to the stage and all that good stuff. A, a really important thing is those of you that are on Disney dining plan, they do accept the dining plan. It's only eligible for the category two people. So you, it's two table service though. Mm. It's two table service credits, but it um, might be worth the same it. with hoopty doo. Yeah. I, I think that this hoopty doo are both worth it for you to use for two table service. Yeah. Because like you said, you've been eating way less since you haven't been on the dining plan. So to, you know, to use two credits to go to one really good dinner and maybe not stuff yourself to death the next day mm -hmm. would be totally mm -hmm. worth it to me too. So, yeah. oh yeah, I mean, but it and just plus depends. you're getting the experience, you're getting the show because there's a, it's a show too, so you're getting all right. of that with it. Um, everyone loves it. They just talk about how amazing this is, and I, you don't hear it talked about a lot though. You know, like on social media and things like that, you don't you don't see it talked about much. But this is definitely one that's on my list of to dos. Um, with you and Cheddar Biscuits. I think it's more, things like this are more fun when you go with a group of people. Yes, for sure. Um, for sure. Than with a small group. So is it worth it? Yes. Yes, from me too. Yes. Moving on. All right. Where are we going Last next? Last one. No, two, two more. more. We got two, two more. more. We're headed over to the boardwalk area. We're headed for to the, the next the, two. Let's go to the beach club first. The beach club. All right. Cape May Cafe. Have you ate here? 
No, I haven't. We had dining reservations for there for two trips ago back in March, and we canceled it like last second um, because we actually got a reservation at the place we'll talk about next um, instead. But um, our friends, uh, Magical Moments, Joe and Sarah and their kids eat here often. Um, and if you watch their vlogs, you've seen them and it, yeah. it's, it, it looks okay. <laughs> I mean, they they say good things about it. It looks okay. I mean, I, I don't. I haven't heard anyone say any great things about it, but I've also not heard anyone say any bad things about it. Right. So I think it just <laughs> depends. I mean, they have kids. They're going there with their kids, so that definitely changes mm. the perspective when you have kids that you're going with, which is probably why for us it doesn't look like the you know the number one place that we want to go. Mm-hmm. But I mean. And it's, worth a try. it's only character dining at breakfast. Only at breakfast, yeah. And it's Donald, yeah. Goofy, and Minnie. Mm-hmm. Which is it's Minnie's Beach Bash. Yes, which is kind of weird for it to be called Minnie's Beach Bash, but yet it's, but it's only Minnie, club. Goofy, and Donald. Like it's at the Beach Club Resort. You really think Mickey is <laughs> missing out on Minnie's Beach Bash? Yeah. Like, no. Where's totally. Mickey? They can't put him there because then there's four of the Fab Five right there. They can't do that. Yeah, I know. They got to make you go other places. Right. And this is, um, I mean, it's like almost 30 bucks for adults for breakfast and then like 15, 16, 17. They give you that range or whatever. But I mean, you know what you're going to pay when you go. Yeah. So, and it's the same stuff that they always the have everywhere stuff. else. I mean, it's just I would, meeting them in their like beach outfits. Exactly. I would be willing to try it. But again, I haven't mm-hmm. heard anything over the top about it. That's all I have to say. Yeah. yeah, That's all we have to say about that. <laughs> uh, it's definitely one on my list to try just because I want to try, be able to try all the character dining right. options on property. Because um, I think Mickey's Backyard Barbecue, Cape May, and Trattoria are the only ones I haven't done. So I've got to make that. I mean, no, I've done Trattoria. Sorry. I Those are the, Cape May and Mickey's Backyard Barbecue are the only character dinings I've not done on property. There's so many so I I've haven't done. I got I to gotta set my game up. <sighs> fail so is it worth it i don't know i don't know i think (laughs) i think it's worth a try it's worth a try and if your kids if you're staying at the beach club yeah totally oh for sure if your kid loves Minnie mouse like loves 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 Minnie mouse for sure then do it because i i think that'd be fun to meet Minnie mouse and like her beach attire and everything oh yeah so beach all right and then heading across 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 the water there over to the boardwalk to my number three favorite character dining on property, Trattoria Al Forno. This is a relatively new one too. This has only been a character dining for about a year now. I have yet to go, and this is on my tippity toppity list to be able to go to like by the end of this year. Like my next character dining. Well, actually, that's a lie because I'm going to Garden Grill in a couple weeks. <laughs> but <laughs> liar. <laughs> The next one after that will for sure be here. Um, it's Punzi, it's Flynn, it's Ariel, it's Eric. I want to go. I need to see them. And this is so unique because it's a menu. So you're choosing mm-hmm. from a menu as opposed to it being family style or buffet, which I think is really cool because that kind of factors in how much you're going to spend. So you don't go in feeling like, oh, I just spent 50 bucks on this character breakfast. Now I feel like I have to eat 50 bucks worth of food, you know? Yeah. Um, And the menu looks uh, like really good. It looks like there's something for everybody as far as just like eggs, pancakes, all of that good stuff, waffles. But they kind of, you know, put their own little twists on it because it is punzi an italian Flynn. restaurant it's an italian restaurant too. it is an italian restaurant at dinner so there's an italian kind of take on all the breakfast items. yes but it looks amazing so tell us what mm-hmm. you thought because you actually went. so yeah the one thing i think a lot of people are turned off by this is because it's at the boardwalk and the boardwalk is kind of hard to get to there's not anything like it, like polynesian you can go to the ttc and then go there if you want to um same with the others like that but the boardwalk's kind of hard to get to if you're not staying there or staying at a resort right there. Um, but you walk in and it's very much an Italian restaurant that they've kind of just turned into like a breakfast thing. Um, so it feels very fancy, but it, it's, it's really not. Um, it's a very big restaurant. And something that I think is really cool is this is one of the only places that do this 
is if it's just like a couple of you, just a couple of adults, you don't have any kids with you and you don't really care about meeting the characters, but you want to eat there. They have a separate room where the characters will not come and interact with you, but you can still get all the same food. That's cool. Yeah. Um, which I mean, we always meet. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> so you go in, you sit down and the first thing they do is they bring you, um, like this kind of like platter of pastries, mm-hmm. um, which are really good. They're like five or six different pastries. Um, and one of the pastries is the shape of the star or the sun, the punzi sun or whatever mm-hmm. it is. It's a sun. Um, it's not a star. Get your facts straight. Just, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just pay attention to Flynn Rider. Um, and then like Kaylee said, you order from the menu, which, um, the, what I always get is the King Triton shipwreck Al Forno, which is a calzone filled with scrambled eggs, salami, bacon, sausage, cheese, and topped with, um, marinara sauce and gravy. Oh my, it, that does not sound appetizing. It's I, well, when I ordered it, Kaylee, the first time I ordered it, I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. Like, cause I, I, I don't know. I just didn't know how I felt, but the, cause I never had like marinara sauce, Italian food for breakfast with gravy too. Like, is it cream gravy or is it like brown? Yeah. Oh, it's a white, cream. it's a white okay. gravy. So this is probably one of the best things I've ever eaten at Disney. I believe it though. Cause it's always like the weird, unique things that are so good. The mm-hmm. thing that I really want to try Amazing. there is the punthy pancakes. The Tower of the Pancakes. The Tower, yeah, where they put the little sun yeah. with powdered sugar on the top. They look so good. Um, I just really want to go they always top it with some kind of fruit. Yes. Um, it, what I love, it, it's super filling. Everything, it, it, it's all super filling. Um, they also have like a steak and egg thing that you can get, uh, a golden frittata, you can get it's it's called like two eggs poached underwater because like Little Mermaid, uh, it's like house made sausage and gravy, Parmesan cheese over like polenta, and it it looks really good. Uh, tangled eggs, which is fresh mozzarella, tomato, basil, eggs, gravy, and potatoes with bacon or sausage. Anyways, it's really cool. Um, it's really different. It's different than just the normal eggs Mickey waffles which is makes it very, very awesome. So this place, the interactions, um, the Little Mermaid and Prince Eric, I'll just say this, Prince Eric, I don't think there's anything they could do to make him a cool interaction. <laughs> it's because like no one cares about Prince. Like, what do you say to him? Hey, so what's, uh, what's it like being married to a mermaid? Like, I mean, what do you have to talk to him about? How's your dog? I never say like things that involve the movies to characters. What? What do you talk to them That's about? That's weird. <sighs> I find it so weird when people well, do that. I think that. it's because him. Like, what are you going to say to him? Hey. Not all. I mean, I guess. I think one time I asked Minnie, like, why hasn't Mickey proposed to you yet? And she just like shook her head or something. But no, I'm never like, oh my God, how is whoever doing like you know i don't know i just don't go into that 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 deep i'm just like oh my gosh i love you i'm obsessed with you let's take a picture but that's just my personality i don't get very deep with people usually so well, that's what i'm saying like eric there's no way to get deep with him like there's just nothing like to talk about <laughs> yeah what was it like almost marrying ursula like i mean i don't know what do you say to him so his interaction isn't very good just because he's just kind of like, he knows that he's there just to like, because of he's, it yeah. being the princesses and their guy. But like, it's just like photo. Bye. We're not here for you. Um, <laughs> Where's Punzi? <laughs> yeah. Everyone's here for Rapunzel. Anyways. Right. Uh, Little Mermaid is fine. That's a great interaction. She's got legs. Yeah. And- I think that's cool that she has legs. Cause you can meet her in magic kingdom with the tail. Mm-hmm. So I think it's cool yeah, that she exactly. has the legs, but also confusing. Um, no, Flynn Rider. This is the only place you can meet Flynn Rider except at Christmas time. Um, this is the only Love place that. you can meet him. Mm-hmm. And it's always the really good Flynn Rider, like the one that actually looks like Flynn Rider. That's always the best when they look the part too. Like they don't have to put a lot of effort into like making them look. Where I feel like with all the Prince, Eric, we're just like bashing Prince Eric. We're like, 
Forget him. But all the pictures that I've seen of people posing with Ariel and Prince Eric, they have to put so much effort yeah. into like trying to make the guy look like Eric. And it's like, there's just no way that you can make him look like Eric because it's just so weird. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Um, a little tidbit for you. With your eating there and you're meeting Flynn Rider, ask him what is in his satchel. A pan. I'll just leave it at that. Just ask him what's in his satchel. What's in it? No, just think back. Just think back through the movie. What did he carry in his satchel? The tiara. It's very, okay, spoiler alert. Gosh, is his actual tiara in there or no? <sighs> yes, it's in there. The crown is in there. Ooh. Yeah, just Trade ask him. He'll secrets. show you privately. He'll be like, he'll try to like hide it. Um, and of course, Rapunzel is awesome as always. What's to in meet the there. satchel? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so it's awesome. It's an Worth awesome, it. awesome meet and greet. It is 100% worth it with an asterisk. Okay. Kids, I don't think, will like this meet and greet. I think this is more teenager, young adult, adult driven character dining experience because of the atmosphere, because of where it's at, because of the food. This is very much more of an older I can see that. Character dining. I can agree with that. Either way, it's worth it to me. Go get you some Flynn Rider and go. Gross. Gross. I will say that meet the waiting area. I do love Flynn Rider. He's my spirit animal. We always have a... He's your boy uh, crush. (laughs) Um, The the waiting area is kind of small. That's the only thing I have against it, but... Um, I love the boardwalk. It's one of my favorite places. I've never been there. It's up there there with the poly to me. I love the boardwalk. It's so beautiful and relaxing there. I wouldn't know. Um, We did, although I do have a bad experience there because it's not really the boardwalk's fault. It was, we took an Uber from our resort there and I left my phone in the Uber and that was a really stressful like hour of my life. Anyways, so 100% worth it, 100% worth it, 100% worth it. Make that a priority on your list. Now, on the Disney app, when you're trying to make a reservation, it doesn't always say that it's a character dining when you're looking at it for breakfast. So even if it doesn't say it, it still is, I promise. Um, Sometimes it says Bon Voyage character breakfast or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't. So as long as it's in the breakfast time period, it's character dining. That wraps up our three-part series on character dining at Disney World. We talked about magic. We talked about all four of the parks. We talked about all the resorts. Now there is a new character dining experience coming to the Wilderness Lodge at Artist Point, where you'll get to meet Snow White and some of the Seven Dwarfs. Um, but we didn't decide to. Rev- we weren't going to talk about it yet, since it's not actually opened yet. Uh, but that is coming in the next uh, year or so. So make sure you watch out for that, and we'll definitely make a point to try that out, so we can tell you guys about I'm it. I'm sad for this to be over because we love talking about food. So this was so fun for us to be able to just kind of like talk about the character dining because we've touched, you know, like the basics on it before, but we haven't really gone like in depth about it. So this was fun. I hope everybody enjoyed listening to it. Head over to our Instagram at Walt's World Podcast and check out some of the photos that we posted yesterday of our character dining experiences that we've had at these places, um, the various times that we've gone to these, um, and, and check out what those interactions are like. As always, I would suggest heading over to YouTube to check out any vlogs of these places before you do your reservations, just to see what it's like and get a feel for it too. That's always helpful if you're like me, I like to know before I actually go. Um, but yeah, so head over there and check that out. Next week is our Tuesday treat episode for October. We have a special guest we're going to leave a little a little secret for you. We're not going to tell you who it is, but they know who it's they are. It's an amazing are. guest. They know They're who they are. They're listening right now. That's right. <laughs> um, so make sure you check that out next week. So I'm headed to Disney at the end of this week uh, for the next week. So make sure that if you guys are going to be in the parks any next week, you hit us up on Instagram and let us know because I would love to see you. Kaylee would love to see you. We would love to see you. I know we're going to be at Epcot Saturday night. So come hang out with us at Epcot and we'll be there Wednesday too. Yes. So So come hang out with us. We want to meet you. So that's it for the episode. We hope you guys enjoyed our three part series on character dining. Let us know what you think. Where are some of your favorite places to eat? Who are your favorite characters to meet? 
Let us know at Waltz World Podcast on Instagram and shoot us an email, waltworldpodcast at gmail.com. All right. So with that, I'm John. And I'm Kaylee. We'll see you next week. 